I actually got into analog synths because they were cheaper than digital synths. You know, I'm that old that I can remember when analog synths were undesirable. So, um, but then it became a bit of an addiction, but I've cut back to what I consider, you know, for me are either very useful machines or, or a few of the classic synthesizers. So this is the Arp Odyssey. It's one of my favorites. It's just a very simple duophonic synth, which means you can play two notes at once, but fundamentally it's better as a mono synth. It was kind of the Arp competitor to the Minimoog, which is probably the most famous analog synth uh, and was uh, basically a cut down version of the Moog modular in a preset format. Uh, this is a very early one. Uh, the, the, when they say RA Moog, it's the, one of the first hundred built. The components inside are based around the modular system as, uh, and later they actually redesigned the circuit boards. So this is quite a, uh, it's a nice sounding one. It's the nicest sounding mini Moog I've had. And basically the ARP Odyssey was the competitor to the mini Moog. And I, I find the ARP more flexible, but the Moog has a very classic rich sound. Then. There's the Prophet 5, which is my favorite polysynth. It's a uh, five-note polyphonic. I th it was the first synthesizer that, that, had, that was polyphonic and had memories, built by Dave Smith, who still makes instruments today. And it's just a wonderful sounding synthesizer. Then there's the 808, um, still my favorite drum machine, just a classic machine, and, and you can use it in all styles of music. Then the Polyfusion, which we've covered. Then my ARP, again, my favorite synth for, for working, and uh, Oberheim Expander. It's my only other poly synth, so it's six voice polyphonic. You actually have six separate outputs, and you can treat it as six monophonic synths as well as a polyphonic synth. So uh, it takes MIDI. You can put each voice on its own MIDI channel and have six completely different sounds playing simultaneously. That's the VCS-3. It's um, the oldest synth here. It's from the early 70s, probably 71. They first came out in 69, I think. And it's for all those classic German Berlin school ambient pieces like Klaus Schulz and Tangerine Dream, which is probably still my favorite era of music is the early 70s, especially the German Krautrock. Then some relatively boring things, but these are quite rare. They're called, uh, they were by a company called DS Tech, and uh, it's called the Original Sin, and it's a mono synth. It's based around the classic Mini Moog style synth. It's completely analog, uh, but MIDI controlled. The company asked me to help with the presets and with basically when they were defining how the synth should be built, so they gave me the prototype, and then I bought another one off of eBay. And if you see one, buy it. Very good. This is a Yamaha FM synth, very rare, very weird. It's uh, just before the DX7 style synths came out, but it's a brilliant sounding FM synthesizer, so nothing analog, but it still, still sounds great. Serge was uh, in America in the early 70s. He worked at a university, and he was a Russian, someone of Russian de descendancy, and he started building modular synths, and the deal was that the university students he would help them build a synth, so they were all built by students. So this is one of the first Surge systems. Uh, very, very crazy synth. Uh, it needs a service, and they're still going today. Different people run it, but you can still buy a new Surge system. They're just extremely expensive. But this was built by students who were probably stoned, and, uh, and I love it. As you can see, this, this guy was really out of his head. He started putting kind of gothic artwork in it. Then a couple of drum machines, which I have to mention. The Roland R8, one of the best drum machines built. If you get one, you'll see why. It does very complex, uh, you can control parameters. It's a very deep drum machine, much deeper than most people think. And then the Akai MPC-60, which is uh, a sampling drum machine, a great MIDI sequencer as well, but uh, it sees very little use these days.